Let's talk about color and the role it plays in UI design. Now, understanding the psychology of color is quite a powerful thing because we can create experiences that resonate with our customers and we can do things like drive customer interactions to important parts of your application, such as sign-up buttons, login buttons, CTA, buy buttons, etc. So some of you are probably, if you have been using Figma and you're working in an agency or a you know, development team, you've probably stumbled across untitled UI and various UI kits available to you. Now these color systems are massive, okay? Look at the size of, the color, of these color systems. And for each color, they can have up to 10 different or five different shades and tints, which makes up to 10 different colors. Look at all of these colors. Now, UI kits are a guide for working with developers, okay? And if you're a bubble user, you're probably working on your own or working in, within a small team. You probably are the only designer and the person doing the technical part of the bubble implementation probably understands a bit of design themselves, but might need a bit of help. So in terms of the untitled UI kit, this is assuming that this is a locked guide um, to then hand off to your developer for them just to follow it 100%. So there might be occasions when they're in a bigger team that they might need more colors. That color system is far, far too much. We can cut that you know, down to about 20%. Let me show you a color system that I use across all of my projects and that has served me really well. Okay, so if we ignore black and white because black and white aren't actually colors, but they obviously white is probably the most widely used uh, color if we could call it that for a second aside from that these are the colors that i tend to use right so these are my neutral colors i've got four here this would be my primary color and i've got four again secondary color don't often use secondary colors to be honest um, some applications do or you know some companies tend to use secondary as well but i don't really use secondary but i would include it just in case all right and we'll get to it in a second where these colors came from then we would need a success, of course. We would need a warning and we would need a danger, such as on a delete button. And guys, this is probably it. I don't think that you would see more colors than this in most of the applications that you'll be using today. Now, Bubble has a defined color style system that they have built in. Um, and that's something that we have to work with so let me demonstrate to you how I've taken these colors and set them up within Bubble. So I'm in my styles variable tab, okay, in Bubble. And the first eight are what Bubble has basically defined and that is available in your swatch. So if I click on the swatch, this is where we can define these particular colors, all right? And if I come across to the front end and double click, bring this across and I have a look at the actual swatch and the layout of the swatch, it's the first row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first row of predefined by Bubble as those are the common colors that you will be using. Now I've gone ahead and created the rest of the swatch. So we have four neutral here, four primary, four secondary, four success, four warning, and four danger. And here they are here on the canvas again for you to look at. Okay, so that's super nice and neat. The layout, eight in a row, uh, four of each. So we have a nice little grid system going here. So back to the variables. So we can add up to 32 and I've used all of these 32 guys. And it just turns out serendipitously that that's actually how many I need to use. And do I use all of them? In fact, I do. And we're going to jump across to the elements to have a look at actually how I use these colors, because we also need to think of color in terms of interaction, right? We're hovering a button. What happens to the color? We're pressing a button after hovering it. What happens to the color? All right, so I would set up my neutral colors, which is basically grays, neutral 100, 300, 600, and 800. That's what I've gone for. And again, we're going to come across to how or where I've extracted these colors from. And then we get to the actual colors across all of the rest, across the primary, secondary, success, warning, and danger. 
I would use a 100, which is super, super light. So that's something such as an inverse to a button. So that a lighter shader and a button. So instead of using opacity, we actually set a color, solid color style. The 700, primary 700 would be my default color. Okay. And if you are experienced with UI kits, you're probably asking yourself, well, Greg, why aren't you using 500? And this is to do with contrast because Google will actually penalize you if your contrast isn't quite right. So the contrast between colors, making sure that everything is visible and comfortable to look at. So in terms of my default, I tend not to use 500. I actually tend to use 700. And then I'll use an 800 slightly darker for a hover effect. Now to use 900 for a press, which is the darkest that it would go. Okay, so after setting up my neutrals, which aren't 100, 700, 800, 900, because neutral, the various things I use it for. I would use 100 as like a gray group. I would use 300 for the borders of an input. I'd use 600 for my text body, because with text, hierarchy is not just about the size and boldness. It's also about the color of the text. That's why headings are often darker than body text. Okay. But when it comes to my actual colors, primary, secondary, success, etc., it's always a 100, 700, 800, and a 900. And here they are here. But let's have a look at, if I jump across to elements, let's have a look at how I'll then utilize these colors. And these buttons are perfect for example. Now, if I just load the front end here, let's go top to bottom in terms of color. So we've got text. Well, here we have like a little badge and the text itself would be a primary 700. And then the, the bounding box around it would be a primary 100. So this perfect harmony and perfect contrast, I'll get a hundred percent score for this. Okay. Heading, darker color, all right? So this would be, you could either use your black here, but I would suggest using a text 900, which is slightly um, more of a charcoal color than jet black. And then I'd use a, well, I could use, I guess, a 600 or an 800 on the neutral for my subtitle. And again, going back to hierarchy. Hierarchy is also about color. Now in terms of buttons, background to this button, this would be a primary 700. Look how clear it is standing off of the white text. When I hover, that is going to be a primary 800. And when I click, see it's gone a little bit darker, it would be a primary 900. So a lot of people don't think about the actual pressing part, uh, which is just feedback to your users that you have actually clicked the button. Maybe to stop those people trying to click with all the time. Head across to the inverse button. I've just made the text go slightly darker, but you could in inverse the colors here where it ends up looking like this color here. You could do that. I'd prefer a more subtle look. And then you've got the outline button here. So the hover effect would be a primary 100. And over here, we've got a neutral button. And then in terms of the iconography, so the border and the icon itself would be a 700 and the background would be a 100. Okay. So when I'm setting up a button style, when I'm setting up a button style, I would first make sure that all of my colors are done and all of my textiles are done. And I'll be doing another video on textiles soon. But in terms of the color itself, color comes first. All right, and then after that we'll do the text. And now we've got text and color to work with. Now we can create things like buttons, which combine more than two elements. But this is how my button styles look in Bubble. I would have my primary buttons, inverse and outline. And then when I'd head over to my conditionals, this is where I'd set a button hovered and a button pressed. When an outline button is hovered, I wanna change the background to primary 100. When it's pressed, I wanna change the background to 700 and do something a little bit different. But on the primary maybe is a better example to show you that a hover on a primary would change from 700 to 800 and on a pressed would change from 700 to 900. So I'd have my primary buttons, then I'd have my secondary buttons, then I'd have my success buttons, warning buttons, and danger buttons. And then lastly, I'd also have neutral buttons. So where do these 
colors come from because actually creating a harmonious color swatch or color system is actually quite difficult. So what you would usually do, or what I do, is actually do a bit of research. Um, a lot of people are using purple at the moment. Think of linear. Uh, Webflow uses a lot of purple. Well, There's just a lot of purple in terms of text. Uh, and that is because the psychology behind purple means sophistication. It means magic, all right? Think of a wizard's hat, magic, purple. Very, very popular in Vogue color right now. So I'd do some research to see what some other people are doing in terms of purple and sort of pick a similar shade. But let me show you another tool I'd use. So if you hop across to colorsui.com and then click across to tint and shade generator, once you have done a bit of research on color, and again, you could pull this color here. This blue could be a primary. You'd usually start with a primary color. So if I choose like a blue color here, like 0066FF, that's a popular color. Sorry, let's get a zero zero in there. Zero zero six six FF. Here is sort of like a Coinbase blue. If I submit that, I've now got my tints and shades. Now we've got 18 to, to work with here. I probably wouldn't choose anything from this line here and I'll probably choose every second color here. You can just copy the hex code and copy them in. But it's something on this first row, I would call this probably um, a six or 700 here. So I'd use maybe, I'd use a 100, I'd use a 700, I'd use an, maybe an 800 and a 900. Okay, so top left, straight beneath it, skip one and then skip one. And those would be just the blues that I tend to use. And then from there, it's actually quite easy to pick um, the rest of your colors, okay? You can actually just move and change these hues. Um, green is a little bit difficult. When it comes to green, you sort of pull it down slightly. And then you can choose your greens. Now, so you start with the primary, basically, and then you, you pick around that. Another way to do it is just to look at other color systems and just use existing color systems. Material by Google is a great color system to use. So I can click across to material and here it is. So if you were to use blue, this is the material icon blue. I'd probably go something like maybe a purple or actually a deep purple would be nicer. Here's a 700 deep purple. And you have your warning. Well, actually warning would be orange. You have your danger, you have your success. So colorsui.com and there are tons of Figma plugins to create these color systems as well. And then you've got um, UI kits like Untitled UI and tons of UI kits to look at that all have color systems built in. So you're looking for a harmonious color system. And I've spent a long time finding the color system that I use for BuildCamp, finally happy with it. And it's actually the Figma kit I showed you earlier. I'm just gonna jump in and show you one more time and you can see how beautifully well these colors fit together. So I would have started on this primary blue, okay? And I think I actually got this blue from Intercom. <laughs> Again, you're gonna look at what, you know, professional um, designers are doing. Um, and then off the back of that, I was able to figure out the rest of these colors. Look how harmonious these are, this nice rich green. Green is really, really difficult. Let's have a look on the swatch actually where this green exists. So it's all the way down here and it actually came from more of kind of like a, bluey green color all the way down and then we also have your warning and your danger as well so this is really it guys so it's these so it's four of each is what you're really looking for and off the back of that you can create all of your elements so a common error i see that new designers or you know people's just getting into no code or, or even front-end design is they use color like a palette too much color um, we want to think about using color as a tool or using color for psychological purposes, like driving actions, what I said at the very beginning um, of this video. Let's jump in and just talk about the 60, 30, 10 rule. So the 60, 30, 10 rule is all about balance. If you go to any website at the moment, you know, if it's professionally designed, you will notice that most of the canvas is white. Okay, same if you click a pop-up, pull out a sidebar, 
white is usually the base color or like a slight gray. Now this is about a harmonious design. It doesn't have to be white. I just mentioned gray. It could be gray as well, or it could be black. That could be the canvas. It's dark mode, but we need to think cleverly about color because color is a tool. Color is accent, all right? And if, even if we look across in nature, you look at some trees, the base canvas of a tree, if it's summertime, spring would be green. And then you might have flowers that would make it possibly 10% of the color of a tree, okay? So we have our dominant color, which would be the 60%. And again, this is not hard and fast rules, guys. This is just guidance, okay? Obviously, this can chop and change, but if you kind of start with this, it'll help you understand how to actually use color for the purpose it's intended. So we'd have our white background, we would have secondary, which is usually your text. And then you'd have your accent, which is iconography or buttons or something like that. Okay, let's have a look at this from Untitled UI. Zoom in a bit. We have 60% white, thereabouts. Maybe it's 70%, doesn't matter again. We're just talking about harmony. We have black or gray, around 30%. And we only have purple in a few places where we want to drive conversion or pull attention. The icon, sign up button. This is the most important element on this little sign up page. Forgot password, sign up. Okay, so we need to be very reserved and strategic about how we use color. Airbnb, what am I looking at? Well, if we ignore the images, it is just basically a white canvas with black text and a bit of gray or charcoal. And then what catches our attention? Airbnb logo plus the search. This is actually where we want, the, want people to go. Or this is actually where we want people to be clicking. Come across to Twitter, 60, 30, 10, 60% white. 30% black or gray, 10% color. Twitter want us to create content. Therefore, this is the most important element on the page, this tweet icon. They also want us to scroll because that's ad revenue. If I click on this button, it's gonna show more tweets. So we're just having a very quick look at Untitled UI, just to give an example of a color system that is really, really well balanced, okay? So again, 60, 30, 10 or thereabouts. We've also got the hierarchy going here, guys. We've got this text is pretty dark, okay? We've got gray 900 in the corner, pretty dark. Down here, text 600, subtitle text or body text. We want to be reading this first. If we read that, great. If we don't, it doesn't matter. This is the most important piece on the page in terms of text, that's your H1. And now we've got the sign up button. That's where we want to take people but very, very clever use of color. Color is minimal, it's used for iconography, it's used for accents, it's used to draw attention, it's used to drive action. So have a think about your wrap, how you can prioritize the use of color. Color is a tool, color in terms of psychology, make sure that you're using the correct color um, and have a dig around to see what other people are using that are in a similar industry course, if you're in the health industry, you're not going to be using red as your primary color. You're going to be using a green, or orange, or yellow, or something like that. Or if you're a tool, a tech tool, maybe it's a purple or blue. You see a lot of those, but again, there's psychology behind this, guys. So um, think about it, and good luck on your color implementation.